Welcome to Moon Harbor Extended. Today's issue is Hellspawn Issue 8, The Future of High-Tech Cleaning Implements. On the cover, the coincidence's future vacuum cleaner rages out of control while Heathen and Sapai cling to a boulder for dear life. To the side, the coincidence searches through their backpack, carefully considering something similar to a swiffer. We turn the page and our story begins. Uh, coincidence, could you, could you turn it off? Uh... Oh man, like the way that it's bent, it had totally like bent over the power button. God, I, I also think like, so I think I tried to say that, but the words get literally sucked out so you see my mouth moving. <laughs> yes. Like, I, I'm trying to scream out like, the power button can't be touched. And it's just, you see my mouth moving and no, no sound. We see the words like getting sucked into it. Oh. Yes, that's beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah, like the whole like text bubble is like going in. Yep. Looking around, is there anything that is stable and like secured down? Is there any like huge rocks or anything I can grab onto? Yeah, there's some huge rocks around. Because I think I'm going to do something kind of desperate. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to whip out a like flame tentacle off one arm and try to wrap it around the rock and then throw the flame tentacle out towards the coincidence. And that's going to hurt. I'm not getting any closer. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Roll to unleash your powers. We forgot rope, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what uh, is my freak? It's weird that we forgot rope because we are in a bit of a bind. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm acting on orders and relying on my training, I can give uh, demon influence to use soldier instead of another label. Can I do that here? Yeah. Okay, because I have a freak of zero and a soldier of two, and I want this to work. <laughs> That's valid. I also feel like you probably have standing orders from Demon along the lines of, keep an eye on that coincidence. Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, yeah, and also just the general, like, protect your teammates. Don't let each other get killed. I have my own conspiracy boards. They're just called, like, logs. <laughs> uh, that is an eight. So, a 7 to 9 market condition, or the GM will tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary. I am going to mark guilty, because I assume this is going to hurt. Yeah, these are like tentacles of fire. Yeah. Also, I'm assuming Demon already has influence over me, so do you want to shift my labels? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to, I think, shift down Savior and up Soldier. Okay. Or no, shift shift down danger. Even worse. Yep. And up soldier. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so one of these fire tentacles you said was heading out towards coincidence to pull them in? Yep. Excellent. So coincidence, are you holding on to this Tupperware vacuum? Ah. Uh, I feel like up to this point probably, yeah, because I don't want it to just like at least right now it's out of control, but it's somewhat directionally out of control. I'm scared if I let go of it, it'll get worse. So when the tentacle pulls you in, it's also bringing in this vacuum. Yeah. Excellent. God. Yeah, so we see we see the coincidence get pulled in, and Heathen and Supai also grabbing on to this rock. And as coincidence, like, I probably, like, roughly slams into this rock. This doesn't feel like it would be gentle. We start to see, like, some of the rock, like, these pebbles keep breaking off of it and the rock is starting to go into the vacuum. And if the coincidence is closer, I'm going to yell again, can you turn it off? I think, I think the word, like this time, the words that come out of coincidence's mouth are split in two bubbles that are slightly smaller. And so you hear barely a whisper of power button blocked, need to stop it somehow else. And like the dragon's tail is starting to get like pulled like, the tip of it is getting, like, really close to getting pulled into the vacuum. This might work out in our advantage. Until it turns on you. <laughs> I want to grab my flail by the, like, uh, ball part of it with the points on it. And I want to try to, like, jab the point in. Because the points are pretty long and narrow. So I'm trying to, like, get them, like, wedged in where the plastic is bent over to try to press the power button that way. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to have you unleash your powers for this. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's that's. Oh no. The fun of the first session where everyone's like, "What are my labels?" Oh fuck. Uh, that's a three. Oh man. 
What? So you said you were using the point of what to try to pass, press it? The flail. Amazing. I think the flail like gets stuck. Like it's bent over it and you just kind of get it wedged in between like this fold. At least it didn't fall into the black hole because otherwise I would have reached my hand in to catch it. I'd like to try something desperate. Hell yeah. I feel like if you're cool with this, that this vacuum cleaner has a like eject button to empty all its contents but because it's like on the fritz, it's just going to eject it all at once. I just want to throw everything in it at the dragon. Oh my god. Hell yes. Yeah, roll to unleash. That's an eight. Condition or unstable or temporary? I'll spend a team to help that. Yeah, we have team. We have team if you don't want to. That works too. Supai wants to help too. I'm happy to have us both bump it up. Yeah, I'm. Ha- I'm happy to. You want to toss out how you're helping? I'm trying to figure out how I can help. I like as I see it all start to like eject. I like whip the flail out, and like as I'm whipping the flail out, it just like knocks the vacuum cleaner like an inch up. Like, it doesn't, like, fully knock it up, but yeah. it readjusts the angle, so it's not aiming just at the tail of the dragon. It's aiming, like, at the chest mm-hmm. of the dragon. And also further away from the three of you. And can I spend a team by, like, as this thing switches polarity, it probably pushes us all backwards? I want to just, like, burst a bunch of tentacles out of my back, or flame tentacles out of my back to, like, hold us in place? Oh, I love that. So, is there anything else that's inside this vacuum from a previous time that you used it beyond the clouds and the obsidian hail? I mean, the answer is obviously yes. Okay, I'll leave the answer to you two. Uh, what went missing from our apartment? Oh my god. My mind goes to a cat. Oh god. But that feels like the cat would probably have died in there. Yeah. And I don't want that. Yeah, no. The cat, it's alive. I think uh, it's our I think our washing machine went missing and we never got an, a straight explanation out of you. <laughs> I love that the I feel I feel like maybe the first thing that pops out is just like uh, the wave of this explosion happens and then there's a stuffed cat like just like a like a teddy bear essentially like a cat plushy that fires out and there's a click 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 and then a whole washing machine explodes out. Oh my god! Yeah, we see like the stuffed cat like bounce off against the dragon like harmlessly, followed immediately by a washing machine that I think like hits the dragon and just causes the dragon to crash land with the washing machine on top of it. And then the, the vacuum, since you have ejected it kind of like shutters to a stop and is still giving like this, like final, like poof of, of nothing else is in there. I think like Supai pulls back in the tendrils and starts like untangle themselves from this pile we've got going on. It's like, our, our washing machine. Seriously, our washing machine? No, that's <laughs> not our washing machine. I feel like, as I say that, the door opens and, like, I'm, a single sock. Like, I don't think it was full. I think there's just, like, a leftover sock belonging to one of you two falls out. <laughs> Delightful. No, it's definitely not ours. No, why would you say that at all? Awkwardly scratches that neck. I'm not carrying that thing back. I could uh, always put it back in the vacuum cleaner. No. I don't. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Is the dragon, like, down for the count? Yeah, it's it's looking pretty rough, like, from from the, like, the vacuum itself. And also, it's, like, pinned under a washing machine. Like, I think the washing machine has fallen on its wings. So it can't, like, it can't get up and fly. Like, it could definitely still attack, like, if you got near it. But it's not going to be able to move for quite a while. I think I grab my gun and grab my pack and start heading big. Come on, we had a mission to do. I think I walk up to the vacuum, uh, to the washing machine, give it a once over. There's like five panels in that style of like me being on a different angle of the washing machine every time. Then I shake my head and go, come back for you later. Grab the plushy cat and the sock and walk away. Oh my God, Quentin, this is such a dork. I pull out my phone and start scrolling through and I find a rune and I don't get super, super close to the dragon, but I like grab a stick or some sort of thing and like sketch out a rune in the dirt. And then I like put one of the trinkets on it, one of the like magical objects on it and activate it. And I look at the dragon and I'm like, this will heal your ring as soon as you can get out. I don't know if you speak English, but just, you know, and then I walk away. I love that. Yeah, I think we get like a panel of the three of you guys like facing away from the dragon and heading off down the path back towards that lake of fire, which are you guys, 
are you guys having any conversation about like the vacuum cleaner on the way or do we want to skip to, to the lake? I'm good either way. I'm cool skipping. I think we've said enough yeah. with the uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> with what we said earlier. <laughs> yeah, so we turn the page and we see the three of you close to the edge of this lake, which now that you're closer, it's not really fire. It's mostly lava, but like fire will leap up from the lake like a sun flare where it just like arches across the lava. And there's this like really narrow path that goes into the lake towards an island in the middle. Like you'd have to walk single file narrow. And some of the fire flares like frequently leap up like fairly close to the path or like land close to it. I look at the path and I'm like, God, I miss having wings. I mean, I guess it's a defensible position. It it arguably is. So are we gonna cross? I'm gonna look at the coincidence. Like, so your scan said something this way? Well, my scan didn't say something anyway. It just said something. Um, There was nothing there, and we had to go somewhere to find something. So, yeah, kind of. All right. I'm going to shake my head. And How far is this path to the middle? Um, I'm trying the pictured distance lengths in my head. It's like far I enough. know. It's yeah. Worst. It's, yeah, because I can picture how things go vertically, but not horizontally. It goes far, like far enough out that it's, you can't really see like much of what's on the island, but like you can tell that it looks fairly large. So I don't know, like two... 200 feet? 300? I don't know. Uh, di- a distance. Cool. Yep, a distance. Cool. The, the technical term. I'm gonna look at uh, heathen and coincidence. Like, so, anything to stop fire? Not a huge problem for me, but... Uh, I'm sure my suit can handle a little heat. It'll be fine. I just, like, toss a shield up. And the shields are, like, only, like, the size of, like, my forearm, so it's not very large. And I'm like, I can... Maybe not die. That's as good a rallying cry as any. <laughs> oh my god. And y'all set off down this this path? Yup. Yup. Oh man, just curious, like, who's leading the way since this is single file? Uh, I think I probably am, because I'm fairly burn resistant. I'm probably is... in the middle. Yeah, that works. I was, I was gonna say I was probably in the back, because I think Quinston's still a little bit feeling a little down from being guilty. So they're just probably trailing behind a little. Yeah, so we see the three of you like start walking single file and we get some panels that kind of are kind of like more zoomed out just to show like how how tiny the three of you are versus the size of the lake. Um, and we see like some of the fire flares coming up. Oh yeah, over it's an overhead shot, of course. We love overhead shots on Moon Harbor. We obviously have to have at least one per issue. And we see like some panels where the like the fire flares start to rise up like dangerously close to you and arc over landing on the other side but you guys do make it to the island unharmed just some close calls with like fire would land and there'd be some splash like really close if we deploy the beacon here we're gonna have to do some work yeah that's true but also it's a pretty safe location yeah, as long as nothing flies in hell. I mean, I've been led to believe that pigs don't fly here often, so that's probably a good sign. I want to assess the situation to see if there's, like, any demons in the flame, in the, like, lava lake, or anything around. Okay. Um, And I took the move, still got it. When you assess the situation, you can always ask one of the following questions, even on a miss. Whose powers are the most trouble? What here is out of place? What is everyone focused on? Well, those are cool questions. I don't think I've looked at the full version of that playbook yet. Yeah, those are some fun ones. That's why I took it, because I really like what here is out of place. Let me try you Psychic. I'm sorry, Ooh. our backup bot died now? Wow. That Psychic came back right away with a 14. Okay. Yeah, so on a 10 plus, ask two. I'm always confused about those kinds of questions with the situation. When it says you can always ask one, even on a miss, does that give you an additional one or is it like that they just substitute in as an option now i think that's like you you get the you get the one onimus and kind of like gives you the option like for on a hit it gives you the option of one of those but you still get to ask one of them on a miss perfect cool 
I think one of the moves has like, you get an additional question, but I don't remember. I think that maybe the protege assess question, regardless. Let's start with, let's look at uh, what here is out of place. So the island in the middle of the lake is pretty like empty. They're like some smaller rocks, but like the only thing that looks weird about it is that there's this pretty large boulder in the middle of it, like 12 feet tall, a little bit wider than that. Uh, knowing that, what here is the biggest threat? So the boulder isn't like, it doesn't look like it's made out of normal rock. It looks like it's made out of hardened magma. And it kind of looks like it's, it's more of mostly hardened magma. Like you can see some parts of it that are not totally cooled down. And also it kind of looks like it's got some like, the way that it's shaped looks like it might be something that's curled up to look like a rock. I'm gonna whisper and relay that message to everybody. Even the rocks, even the rocks here. I hate this place. Maybe it's friendly. Yeah, nothing here is friendly. You never know if you don't ask. Be Fine. my guest. I'm gonna walk up to it and like stand probably like five or six feet away from it and then loudly be like, are you friendly? Oh my God. <laughs> so in response, like the ground just starts to shake as this rock starts to stand up, which in my head is happening. Like looks like it has this, like the same music as like the taluses and breath of the wild. That's but, what it I was is, too. Yep. <laughs> but it is not like, the boulder that steps up, it is a bit more humanoid. Like it looks like it's this this giant that is made of the, the same, like the same magma and like the underbelly of it, like the, the front side of it is more, is more of like the not hardened magma. But yeah, now I've got the Talus music from Breath of the Wild stuck in my head. Does it respond? Does it look friendly? Is it about to attack me? It does not look friendly at all. Great, I want to attack it with my flail. Roll me a directly engage. While this uh, is happening, can we get panels of Supai just straight up turned to the coincidence? Like, so, does it look friendly? What do you think? Well, uh, let's see. If some, if I was taking a nap and someone were to run up and yell at me, I wouldn't be friendly either. You, <laughs> you, you have a point, actually. I, that's fair. Thank you. But to answer your question, no, it does not look friendly at all. I'm gonna go reach for a gadget now. <laughs> I cocked my gun. <laughs> So I have a move called overcompensating, which is when you directly engage a threat with far greater power than you, you can roll plus mundane instead of plus danger. If you do, you cannot choose to resist or avoid their blows. Ooh, that's a fun one. Yep, that, but it's like the talus that's in uh, on the way up to Goron, like to, to the Death Mountain. <laughs> There's the one that's in like the path after like the second checkpoint. Yeah. I have never fought that one. I've always avoided it every single time. Oh yeah, I've never fought it and I usually try to avoid them, but also like it's, yeah, I have I have Zelda games memorized like that. All right, so that's an eight. I can't choose resist or avoid their blows. I want to impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Ooh. So what does it look what does it look like when you're trying to attack attack this giant with your flail? I think I bring it up from like between its legs and like hit it in like the center of the stomach. And I'm trying to like rake it up the like soft fire part of the stomach. So it like tears a pretty major hole in it. And like, as I swing the flail, the points do glow a little bit. That's not my magic. It's just like the fact that this was made out of like HR's chain and is a demonic metal. Yeah, so it it like steps back and like looks down at its chest, like surprise. Like it's, it's humanoid, but like its face is very like, it's not particularly easy to read. It's kind of got like glowing, glowing eyes and it's hard to see the face. Um, but it's just kind of like looking, looking down, really surprised that like that was so fast and you went straight for it. And it looks up from its chest and reaches out with one of its hands and comes like one of the hands like comes racing towards you in a punch. And I'm going to have you roll to take a powerful blow. This is a giant hand made of hardened magma so it burns that's a five okay how do you uh weather the blow i think we get a panel from supai and the coincidences point of view and we see like the hand just wrap around me and then when we like 
the next panel is the hand like opening up and we just see me like cowering with a shield above my head and like the pinky is burning the ends of my hair but is not like actually touching me because the shield protected me from it and supire coincidence you guys jumping in oh, yeah i think i turned to spy talk more later shoot now sounds good and is he then still in the thing's hand i was thinking it like closed on top of me but like it let go when i was still on the ground oh, okay but if it's more dramatically interesting for me to be in the thing's hand go wild good no, it, yeah it had it had been like more aiming to punch so it was like kind of more like bouncing off the shield cool yeah, I think I just break into a, a run towards. You, are you running and trying to attack? What are you doing? I probably not. Almost everything I can do is fire, which I don't think helps this situation. So I'm just going to get close to see what I can do to defend anyone who needs it. Okay. I guess that leaves me to try something. So I think I so I see you run in and I run in after. I didn't realize I haven't pulled a gadget out, so I just reach in and pull out the first thing that comes out. And I think I end up with just a giant stick that looks like a Swiffer, but the like head of it is just like a flat rectangle of like plasma. And I just go to swipe at the giant rock monster. Oh my god. Yeah, roll to directly engage with Dryat, and then I want to hear what what this object does. Yeah. Let's see. This is a plus zero roll. It's a four. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think I go to like swipe and the plasma hits the surface of the rock. These And then there's like a sizzling. And I, as I move it across its arm and we see that its arm is sparkling. I go, oh, right. This is the cleaning variant, not the combat variant. Oh, my God. Yeah, it gets, gets some nice shiny Ignatius yeah. rock. Yeah, so it's it's nice and shiny as it, as I assume, swings towards me. Oh my god. <laughs> so, it doesn't swing towards you, but it raises its its arm that wasn't trying to punch at Heathen. I'm almost said Faye. It, like, raises its arm, and some of the lava, like, like, jumps up. And as it comes racing towards you, it starts to harden as it comes. And like it like wraps around you in a circle um, around your arms, like pinning you in. Can I try to stop that? Yeah, you trying to defend? Yeah, I think I like lash out both my arms and try to like grab its arm and hold it back with my flame tentacles. Roll to defend. Hey, it's a nine. On a seven to nine, it costs you expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Dealer's choice. Oh, you said you were trying to stop the um, you were trying to stop the hand from reaching out. Yeah. I think we get, we get a panel of like the tentacles like wrapping around it, like me pulling against them to hold the arm back. So I think when that happens, it's some of the some of the lava has already like reached up, and instead of going out towards the coincidence, it ends up like lashing out at you and like kind of like hitting you like a whip. And I'm gonna have you roll to take a powerful blow. I also totally write down wrote down this thing. For one of its moves, it's lava bending. Amazing. Fantastic. Uh, oh. Hey, it's a three. Okay, so we either do really well on taking a powerful blow or the worst. <laughs> Everyone is invincible except coincidence, which I'm fine with. <laughs> so how are you weathering this blow? I think we get like it whipping towards me and me just like dodging underneath it. I mean, this is kind of my thing. I'm, I'm pretty good with the flame whips. I'm used to having to avoid my own. That's fair. And then just like redoubling back, holding back this arm. And Heathen, what are you up to under that shield? I am frantically scribbling a rune on the ground, like flipping through my phone to try to find the right one. I'm trying to find one that like, it says it freezes things. And I'm like, I've never tried it. I really hope it's ice freezing and not like pausing it, but I'm going to try it anyway. So I'm like frantically scribbling a rune on the ground, trying to activate it. Roll to unleash your powers. Oof. We have three team. Yeah, I could spend the team. That was a six, by the way. Yeah, how are you helping? Yeah, so I think I think you're trying to scribble the rune, and like the ground is so dirty. I just give it like a quick pass with my plasma swiffer, and like make it a clean surface for you to scribble on. Oh my god, I love that. Fantastic. Yeah, so you're trying to you're trying to freeze it with this rune. 
Yeah, my plan is to like dive out of the way so it steps on the rune. Okay. And like freezes its leg. Cool. And that bumps it up to a seven to nine. So condition or unstable or temporary. I'm going to mark insecure. I am not used to working without like access to full magical powers immediately. And I'm feeling not great about it. Okay. Yeah. So I think it, it like rears back to try to punch at you again. And we see, we see he then like roll out of the way as it punches into the rune. And it's, its hand is like stuck to the ground and we don't really see it freezing because it's made out of magma, but we see the rock like instantly hardening into Ignatius rock, um, like coming up from the arm. So I don't think it like it, it doesn't turn the entire thing into rock, but like it's that arm is like petrified into the ground right there, keeping it stuck in a pretty weird angle. So I actually have an idea based on how this is going. Go for it. I'm realizing that I only have a cleaning implement. Would like to try and comfort and support this demon by spiffing it up. Like giving it a nice clean polish? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're all the comfort and support. I love that concept. I think I'd like to use tomorrow's golden promise by regaling it with tails as I clean it up. And if you if you, if you think this will fit in the way that I try is go, hey, wait a second, I recognize you. Oh, I didn't notice before because you were all so dusty. Uh, hold on, let me just get the cleaning a little there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the future, uh, you are one of the huge guardians of this base that gets built right here, right now. You're so, so instrumental to keeping the world safe. And you're such a good, kind-hearted soul. I know deep inside, we just need to get this grime off and you'll be a great asset. I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh my god. That's so great. Yeah, so that's rolling plus savior instead of mundane. Yeah, which is a plus two instead of a minus one. Yeah, are you... Are you confident that the story no, is not true? At all. Not at all. Okay. I'm taking condition. <laughs> I am going to mark. I'm going to go with insecure because I am very under equipped for this scenario. But hey, that's a 12 on the dice plus two. That's a 14. Okay. On a hit, they hear you. Um, and <laughs> you can also add a team to the pool or clear condition yourself. Uh, I will clear. Hold up. I don't think I can clear condition. Yeah. Okay. No, so, I can't. Oh, it doesn't stop me from doing that. So I'll yeah. clear guilty instead. I don't want to clear insecure. I'll clear guilty okay. from earlier. Okay. So it it turns to you as you are like polishing it up. I think we see like some of the magma start to like sparkle and like this like brownish red. And it just kind of like it's with all of all that we've really seen of the face is mostly the eyes, and we just see this like giant smile start to widen. And then it kind of like opens like opens its mouth and like booms in this like deep echoing voice. You really think so? Oh yeah, 100%. We can get you spiffed up in no time. Here, here, here. Uh, I pull out a bottle of just like a generic um, like cleaning spray and toss it over to Heaven and then pull out a uh, uh, mop and toss it over to Sapai. Yeah, we'll get you spiffed up in no time. Come on, you two. And I think I drop my rifle that has been aimed at this thing the whole time to catch the mop. And I just lock eyes with Heathen like, what the hell? And I, I will mop the demon is a thing I would never thought I would never say. Oh, my God. It like starts talking as you guys are like cleaning it up. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of lonely and dusty out here. It's good to have some company. Yeah, I can imagine like that. Bridge is really long. Sure you need visitors all the time. Yeah, I don't get any visitors over here. We could visit. What do y'all say? I look back and forth between everybody, like all three of them, and then I'm like, uh, "Yeah, we can visit." And I'm, uh, I'm sorry about beating the shit out of you. It kind of like does a one-sided shrug since one of its arms is also like petrified to the ground. And it's like, that's okay, I was attacking you too. I'm gonna spray the uh, rune that I scribbled and like smudge the corner of it so it breaks the freeze so its arm can like unfreeze from the ground. Yeah, we get a few panels where like it starts to, I guess, melt, liquefy a bit more. Um, it like goes back to normal and we see him like opening up his hand and like closing it a few times, getting used to the sensation. See, I'm glad that this is all lava under the bridge. <laughs> I just have the biggest shit-eating grin on my face as I look uh, between the, everyone. I think, like, 
the giant, um, whose name is Ignatius, by the way, uh, just like starts like laughing in this like not earth shaking, but like hell shaking like laugh. <laughs> Uh, so, Ignatius, could you give us all just one second? And I'd like to call a quick team huddle. I go over. Yeah, I, I hop off of Ignatius's back where I was, like, getting the last spot. So are we doing this? And, like, I hold up the beacon. Might have to explain to Demon not to come in guns blazing somehow. But I think we should... I feel like Ignatius was on board with the idea of being a protector for the forward base. For the outpost. I'm gonna, like, pop my head up out of the uh, huddle, like, Ignatius, how do you feel about a lot more company? He kind of, like, tilts his head a bit, and he's like, how much company? I don't remember how big this base is gonna end up being. Just a teensy, fiensy, permanent outpost with humans coming and going. We see him, like, take in the idea. And actually, I'm gonna have you roll to provoke somebody. Uh, which one of us? Yeah, I think, I think Supai. Since you were the one who, like, outright asked. I believe in you, Sapai. I don't think I can stretch this enough to make making a deal with a demon being acting on orders or relying on my training. No. <laughs> I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. So here we go. But what's a trip to hell if you don't make a deal with a demon? We have two team. We can pop that to a seven. Yep. I hope so, because that's a five. Yeah, how are you guys helping? I look up and I'm like... I know it's going to be a lot of people, but there are also going to be other demons coming through, potentially. Friendly demons from our world. We do have a few employed by our company, so that might work. And hey, uh, you'll get to see us again. I'll come by with the cleaning tool. Make sure that you say Spiff and Spam. Promise. Or I'll send someone by if I can't, if I'm really busy. But you definitely will always be clean. You are looking good. Oh my god. Yeah, he... He smiles and, like, starts to get up from, like, where he had been lounging as you guys, like, luxuriously cleaned him up. And he starts, like, kind of, like, wandering around, like, looking like he's trying to find something. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I will. I, I, uh, I, I'm gonna go make some, uh, good, uh, good, uh, uh, lava soup. Welcome, welcome dish. And Supai, you've got influence over Ignatius? Yes! I look at Supai and I'm like, okay, so can we drop the beacon and get us home and uh, get us out of this heat because this is very uncomfortable for someone who is very not fireproof. Uh, yeah, while he is getting his lava soup, I think it's time to press the beacon so we can explain this situation while he's not here. Oh my god. Yeah, so we see you press the beacon and like the the LED diode had been like out and as you press it, it glows this I'm trying to remember our colors. It's a non-binary flag. It starts alternating between the colors. So we've got like some purple, yellow, and black. And a couple seconds later, this portal opens up in front of the three of you. So Ignatius, we will be back. This port, this beacon here that we just dropped, don't step on it because that's how we're going to get back and how other people are going to get here. So just, just don't step on it. It's right here. I'm going to point and like make a very big show of like, this is where the beacon is. We see him nod and like he's like lifted up like a smaller rock where there's um kind of like a, a hollow out space underneath. And we see him like pulling out some like very large like pots and pans and like filling one of them up with lava. <laughs> he's like, you got it. I'm going to step through the portal. Dibs on trying the lava soup when we get back. And I step through. I am stepping through. Oh my God. Yeah, and we see you guys come out through a portal back into the portal room at Demon, which is a lot emptier now. It looks like you guys are the first team back or like other people have already left the room, but Fiona is waiting for you. She like comes up from across the room to hurry over as you guys step up. How'd it go? Uh, we made a friend. Uh, okay, a friend? <clears throat> we Coincidence have... made a friend. We have employed a guard for the new forward outpost. And Quidson's like straightens their back up and looks as formal as they possibly can at their full height of like five foot six and just try to stand very impressive and formal. Oh my god. You employed a a, a guard? What who who is this guard? He's a a local chef, makes 
what I've heard is the best soup. In in hell? Yep, oh, and no. I walk away without explaining any further. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Allow me to regale you. The tales are our friend Ignatius. And I'm just gonna like overly friendly put an arm around Fiona's shoulder and like start walking, talking her away, even if she's not done. Oh my god. <laughs> and I'm just following, shaking my head, hand to my face. Also, how tall is Fiona? Because I, I imagine probably taller than me. We said six two or six three. Yeah. So my arm is reaching for that like around shoulder walk and talk. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks awkward as fuck. I kind of think it's a fun place to end there. Yeah, I think I agree. so. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets, T.B. Huth, and Elliot Peterson, and edited by Anthony Sheets and Sean Geddes. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is a theater artist and educator in the D.C. area. She can be found at T. Huth Playwright on Twitter or T.P. Huth 94 on Instagram. Elliot can be found at Elliot Elen, E-L-L-I-O-T-Y-L-E-N on Twitter. Sean can be found at The Crumpet, T-H-E-C-R-U-M-P-I-T on Twitter. Moon Harbor Heroes is played using Masks A New Generation, written by Brandon Conway and produced by Magpie Games. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or on Patreon at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. The music in this issue is Halls of the Undead by Kevin MacLeod. A link to his website and the license will be in the show notes. This issue is GM'd by Elliot Peterson. The coincidence was played by Almer Amaraz. Almer is what happens if puns gain sentience and develop a love of math, writing, and superheroes. They lend their voice to a variety of projects, both as a writer and a performer, as well as design games of their own. You can follow their exploits on their Twitter account, at Amaraz. That's A-M-M-O-U-R-A-Z-Z. Supai is played by Anthony Sheets. Heathen is played by T. Huth. Heathen was played using the Enduring Playbook. The Enduring was written by John of Listen to These Nerds. They can be found at LTTNCast on Twitter. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please leave us a review on your podcatcher of choice or tell a friend. Five-star reviews and word of mouth are really the best way for us to keep bringing these stories to more people. If you'd like to support us financially... Check us out at patreon.com slash moonharborheroes. Supporting us there will give you access to bonus issues each month. And thank you for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue. I'm sorry, give me a second. I'm trying to regain my composure from lava soup. (laughs) (laughs) I've been laughing this whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Okay.